in the headlines. Appeal courts to hear appeals seeking immediate swearing in of Atiku Abubakar as president May 18th. House of Representatives proposes 500 million naira fine, seven years jail term for medical tourism. ASU warns of Lumen's strike over non-implementation of agreement with government. And on the foreign scene, International Court of Justice orders Uganda to pay $325 million in reparations to DR Congo. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. <music> And now the news in full. Appeal court in Abuja will on May 18th hear an appeal seeking immediate swearing in of Atiku Abubakar as president and nullification of 2019 election that produced President Muhammadu Buhari. Duplication of legal representation on Wednesday stalled hearing in the appeal challenging educational qualification of President Buhari at the last general election. A group, Incorporated Trustees of Civil Society Observatory for Constitutional and Legal Compliance, instituted the appeal. Trust TV's Shafi Usuleiman reports that the appellate court is compelled to adjourn hearing to allow two contending counsels sort out the issue. The Joining the matter at the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, All Progressive Congress, APC, and President Muhammadu Buhari. The Incorporated Trustees of the Civil Society Observatory for Constitutional and Legal Compliance approached the Appellate Court to review judgment passed in favor of the respondents at the lower court. We are challenging the proper nomination of President Buhari, and, um, but on different grounds from those that have already been determined by the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. I think I need to make that clear. These are on different grounds. But still, a challenge to his qualification. The issues in this appeal has been decided in the case of um, Amadou Abubakar Atiku against INEC and uh, the, my Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria stated clearly that President Mohamed Buhari is eminently qualified. So that's what we filed in our appeal, that we don't even know what we are doing here because the court, the Supreme Court, both this court, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court has stated clearly that President Muhammad Buhari is eminently qualified. So really what is happening here is really an academic exercise because the court cannot go back and then reverse what it has decided. At the resume hearing of the matter before Justice Amani Haruna, a new counsel, Oluwali Afolabi, announced appearance for the second and third respondents. APC and President Muhammad Buhari as against the usual counsel Ahmedu Princess, necessitating the need to seek an adjournment to allow for further clarifications. Different law firms filed processes for the third respondent as President Buhari and um, all claiming to have been duly briefed by the President to represent them. We have a letter expressly instructing us to represent the two respondents, the second and the third respondents, and that is what we have done. We represented the third respondent uh, at the trial court. When this appeal uh, was entered at the Court of Appeal, we also represented the third rep uh, respondent. Uh, but my learned friend uh, this morning, uh, we discussed and he showed me a letter of instruction from the All Progressive Congress. Uh, the third respondent is a named party, the second respondent is a named party. Uh, they are not the same thing. But however, it's um, something that can be sorted out amongst ourselves. The appellate court granted the request to allow the resolution of the dispute and ask the parties to return for hearing on the 18th of May 2022. The applicants are challenging the educational qualifications of the incumbent president, Muhammad Buhari, in the appeal, which the APC and INEC are joined as first and second respondents. Shapiro Suleiman. Trust TV News, Abuja. Rivers State Governor Yesom Wiki on Wednesday stormed the Plateau State High Court sitting in Joss, the state capital, to show solidarity with his party chieftain Jonah Jang of the PDP, who is being arraigned in court. 
Jiang, a former governor of Plateau State between 2007 to 2015, is standing trial alongside Yusuf Pam, an ex-cashier in the office of the secretary to the government of the state, on alleged 6.3 billion naira fraud charges brought against him before the court by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The two accused persons were first arraigned before Justice Daniel Longji in March 2018 on 17th count charges bordering on criminal breach of trust and misappropriation of public funds, but they had since pleaded not guilty to the charges. Meanwhile, Wike used the opportunity to declare that the PDP remains the only hope for Nigerians in order to escape the bad governance of the failings of the All Progressives Congress come 2023 general elections. It is not about a Muslim, it is not about a Christian, it is not about God, it is not about the South, the killings, the insecurity, the hardship, the poverty. It is everywhere. It, insecurity is not a thing, whether I am a Muslim or whether I am a Christian. Look at what is happening in Plateau State, look at how the innocent people are being killed and dead. And it was happening on a state. Christians are dying here, Muslims are dying here. So, it's not about what to South. It's about insecurity in Nigeria. And the only hope Nigeria has to be is for people. Federal government will launch an investigation to unravel the circumstances behind the circulation of adulterated petrol with methanol quantities above the country's specification. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Priye Silva, announced this on Wednesday while filled in questions from State House reporters after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. Issue. I would not, uh, I'm not in a position to disclose the identities of the companies, but there are some issues and uh, we are actively tackling it. Um, methanol, no, no, uh, uh, nobody has before now checked for methanol in our fuel. It's, it's not uh, very usual and uh, this is the first time this is happening. And NMPC is very much up to the task. Uh, and I will uh, also convey your question to NMPC and uh, maybe the midstream and the downstream regulatory authority. But uh, we are actively handling it, and I want to assure you that uh, the problem uh, will be a thing of the past very, very soon. It will be a, a major investigation uh, to unravel everything. And then let's really get to the bottom of it before um, uh, we can come back and tell you what is going to happen to the culprits. Uh, we know that uh, some people's vehicles must have also been damaged. That is also going to be taken into consideration in, uh, in, in, in dealing with the situation. Meanwhile, some motorists in Gombe State complained that their vehicles developed fault after using the suspected adulterated fuel. The Nigerian Meat Stream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority confirmed circulation of adulterated fuel with methanol above specification in the country. Ibrahim Ismail reports. Oh yeah, so to, so to read the This video has been trending on social media showing how a filling station dispensed an adulterated fuel which created panic among Nigerians. A cross-section of motorists in Gombe said they have been affected by adulterated petrol which created problems to their vehicles. I used to fuel my car and no problem, but these days it is jacking. My car developed fault, which cannot be explained. I think the fuel we buy is adulterated. I fuel my bike in filling station. The carburetor is jacking and water was found inside. I even washed the tank two days ago. Those causing this problem should stop, please. Meanwhile, Nigerian authorities also confirmed that there are huge quantity of adulterated premium motor spirit in circulation across the country. The supply situation we have, I think we are 
in good stead. We, we, are, we, are, we have enough product in, uh, around. And I think um, at the moment, I, don't, I have not received any official complaint on anything um, related with the contaminated product that we have in circulation. Um, we have received clear directive on what to do, and we are doing it. Uh, that is to say uh, that we should monitor all the movement of product being received through our depots here before you get to the retail outlets. Yeah. We, so we go and check, we check the product, we take sample of it uh, and, and to ensure that this said quantity of uh, small product that is uh, causing problem is not allowed to be circulated to the public. President Muhammad Buhari has ordered an investigation to unravel how contaminated petrol get to the Nigerian market. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. Similarly, federal government through the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority says at least six vessels ordered by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has arrived at the country. The chief executive officer, NMDPRA, Farouk Ahmed, stated this on Wednesday ahead of a meeting with industry stakeholders in Lagos. He said the vessels came in with 300 million liters of premium motor spirit meant to close the gap created by the contaminated patrol withdrawn from depots and filling stations. The regulator on Tuesday said it discovered limited quantity of PMS with methanol quantities above Nigeria's specification in the supply chain, noting that it has commenced the evacuation of the adulterated products and advised Nigerians against panic buying. Moving to health. Nigeria Center for Disease Control recorded 37 infections across the country on Wednesday. The new cases were recorded in five states and the federal capital territory. The agency data shows 10 persons were discharged on Wednesday after recovering from the infection. Nigeria now has a total of 253,850. 75 confirmed cases and 230,221 recoveries. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has appealed to wealthy nations to assist low- and middle-income countries to procure test kits, treatments, and vaccines. A 500 million naira fine and seven years imprisonment awaits any public officer who travels abroad for medical attention. This is if the bill for an act seeking to sanction public officers from seeking medical help abroad with public funds is passed into law. The bill passed second reading in the House of Representatives. The report. Sponsor of the bill, Representative Saigyo Sogun, while leading the debate on the floor of the House on Wednesday, said the bill will positively impact on the lives and well-being of the people and make provision for sanctions against any public officer who violates the provisions of the Act, especially Section 46 of the Act. Other lawmakers supported the bill, which eventually scaled second reading after a heated debate on the rationale behind the bill. Punishment for flouting that Act, which the Act did not catch on, can be an oversight. So, the amendment here is an amendment to is section two of the of uh, an amendment to section one and i read mr speaker any public officer of the government of the federation or any part thereof who violates the provision of subsection one above shall be guilty of an offense and liable on convi conviction to a fine of 500 million naira or to an imprisonment term of seven years Capital flight we are experiencing in this country. The way and manner our people use various excuses to go overseas. And the need, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that our health institutions and medical facilities work without people serving in public or because they can have recourse to public posts and go overseas and get treated. There wouldn't be any attention paid to our own health institutions. Since an act is existing, what we are saying is that 
Is it possible to be a lacuna? Is it to us to allow a lacuna? And I've said something is wrong, but no punishment is proof. The Sorry. question now is that the bill be read the second time. Those in favor say aye. aye. Against say nay. That is have it. Meanwhile, the House also asks the federal government to declare a national emergency on ritual killings in Nigeria, calling on the National Orientation Agency, religious leaders, as well as the media to undertake a campaign to change the negative narrative that is bedeviled in the society. This followed a matter of urgent public importance moved by the House Deputy Minority Leader Toby Okechuku on the need to curb the rising trend of ritual killing in Nigeria. This is also alarmed by the moral decadence in our society, a trend that has promoted the get rich quick syndrome amongst our youths. The House is mindful of the role of the Nigerian movie industry in molding behavior patterns in our society, reserving the mandate of the National Film and Video Censors Board as a clearing house for movies produced in our country. The House is cognizant that a lot needs to be done by the police and other law enforcement agencies to checkmate the ugly trend. The House also is also mindful of the role of media as a tool to change this wrong narrative among our youths. The House therefore resolves to declare an, a national emergency on ritual killings in Nigeria a call and call on national orientation agents, agencies, parents, heads of schools, religious leaders and the media to undertake a campaign. The House also urged research institutes to develop herbs against COVID-19. You're still watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. How school dropout fabricates electronic car? Do stay. The idea was to have to give the interim government confidence that there is somebody, a military man, who is well known, who can be accepted. You alluded to the case of your son, uh, Umar Farouk. Are you are you still are you in touch with him? Yes, yes. We he he phones us uh, two times, sometimes three times in a month. As always, when I'm talking about later Abiola, I still thank my God for directing me on things to do when He gave me that leadership of this country. Many of you honest Fulanis. You allow this man to cast a passion on you. You know, Zomfara is the mother of all bandits. <laughs> the biggest problem, if you permit me, is the fact that we have not been able to get the totality of our citizenry. It is very, very difficult to have a fixed uh, mind like that, that this one will, you will hand over to this person because you think you will do better. I don't see myself under no circumstance ever leaving APC for another political party. Here on the Manbila Plateau. And this is where the hydroelectric power dam is supposed to be constructed. Most people in Nigeria are ignorant of the fact that employing a child as a maid is in fact against the law. Access to the textile mill has been very difficult. I believe or I think that if you want to make money, it should be in a place where there are not plenty of people that can do what you do. From the way things are happening now, I don't think uh, the two parties will make an impact. I've been talking about the updates concerning the campaign of Nigerian super egos in Abuja. Sibola Tinubu has informed President Muhammadu Buhari of his ambition to contest for the position of president. To be self-reliant, a blind man defies all odds to become a carpenter in Gumbi State. The country is now experiencing a fourth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic with the emergence of the Omicron variant. Welcome back and thanks for staying. You're still watching News Update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. 
You heard that appeal court in Abuja will on May 18th hear an appeal seeking immediate swearing in of Atiku Abubakar as president and nullification of 2019 election that produced Muhammad Buhari as president. You also heard that a 500 million naira fine and seven years imprisonment awaits any public officer who travels abroad for medical attention. Moving on to more news, Nigerian military on Wednesday confirmed that two of its officers died in a shootout with unknown gunmen in Ihiala town, Ihiala Council of Anambra State. Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Onyema Nwachuku, also confirmed that four members of the Eastern Security Network, the security arm of the indigenous people of Biafra, were killed in the gun duel. He stated that the gunmen were caught napping while forcing the illegal sit-at-home order pointing out that the gunmen fired sporadically into a patrol filling station in Ihiala. On receiving the distress call, troops of the Nigerian army mobilized to the location to restore normalcy where a fierce gunfight ensued, during which the troops neutralized one of their leaders and three others. Items recovered from the gunmen during the encounter include one motorcycle, two pump-action double-barrel guns, 12 live cartridges and substances suspected to be cannabis, among others. A school dropout in Meduguri, Borno State, is fabricating wheels that run with electricity. This is coming as the world pushes to mitigate the effects of climate change through reduction of gas emission to the environment by 2050. Cars emit fewer greenhouse gas, which poses danger to health, but with new innovations of electric vehicles, it will preserve the planet. Take a look at the amazing small local vehicle factory in Meduguri. Mustafa Gajibo is a school dropout from the University of Meduguri. The 29 years old owns a small factory that's into designing and building vehicles. Beside the young innovator's passion converting wheels to generating sets for the past three years, he says reducing economic hardships and fuel hikes inspired his work. At this time in Nigeria, we have uh, a lot of uh, problem of uh, fuel going up. Uh, and then in turn, uh, you know, prices of uh, transportation will also go up. So much drought, most especially in this part of the world, Nigeria, we are facing so much drought. Uh, food security is being threatened. So uh, we have to find solutions. A fabricated vehicle after charged for 35 minutes can operate at a range of 150 kilometers. The factory has employed 12 staff and it has a production capacity of 20 vehicles monthly. He plans to push up his target to 4,500, but he needs support. Very well, we need support from we need support from the government, uh, most especially in terms of policy, in terms of uh, funding. Uh, for example, now uh, you can see uh, there are so many parts of this vehicle that we import them from abroad. So uh, we need a policy, a good policy, where we can have access to foreign exchange at the official rate so as to bring down the cost of our production. Put even zero duty on any parts that you're going to import if you're going to use, if you're going to use this part for production of electric vehicles. So with these little policy, uh, policies and uh, also funding from the government and from the private sectors, we will surely uh, upscale our production. Governments across the world are also looking to reduce carbon emissions, air pollutants that contribute to health problems, and electric cars will play a big role in helping fuel economy and lower fuel costs. This innovation can also be an alternative for Nigeria to escape fuel crisis. And finally, away from Nigeria, the UN's top court on Wednesday ordered Uganda to pay the Democratic Republic of Congo 
$325 million in reparations over a brutal war between the African neighbors that began in the late 1990s. The court's president, U.S. George Juan Donoge, says the reparation award to the DRC for damage to persons and to property reflects the harm suffered by individuals and communities as a result of Uganda's breach of its international obligations that a large number of civilian casualties occurred in the DRC between 1998 and 2003, and that a significant part of these casualties can be linked to internationally wrongful acts of Uganda. However, there is insufficient evidence to support the DRC's claim of 180,000 civilian deaths for which Uganda owes reparation. Total sum is to be paid in annual installments of 65 million U.S. dollars on 1 September of each year from 2022 to 2026. The court then sets out the total amount of compensation awarded to the DRC, which is 325 million U.S. dollars. This global sum includes 225 million U.S. dollars for damage to persons, 40 million U.S. dollars for damage to property, and 60 million U.S. dollars for damage related to natural resources. With that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.